All right, so the first thing we do is solve the corresponding homogeneous equation. So consider y double prime plus y equals 0. So that's m squared plus 1 equals 0. That's the tricky part. you got to remember that that y is not y prime. So if you put an m there, which is a very common mistake, that becomes m squared plus m. That's the wrong characteristic polynomial. The m term is the first derivative term. So that means m is plus or minus i. Subtract that across. So remember that if you had a plus or minus bi, that meant you did c1e to the at sine of bt plus c2e to the at cosine of bt. So this means my y sub h is, I mean, a is 0, so there is no e to the t part of this. So it's just c1 sine of t plus c2 cosine of t, b being 1. Now, All right, now step 2 is the method of undetermined coefficients. So now I'm going to make my guess of y sub p. I've actually got two pieces on the right-hand side. So the first piece needs an a t plus b because it's a linear equation. The second one now needs a sign but because um, if I just did A, it's not A, now I should do the next letter, which is C sine of T plus D cosine of T, right? That's for the first part. This is for the second part. The problem is that has the form of one of our homogeneous pieces constant times sine of t. In fact, both of them are part of our homogeneous case. So I need to put in a t here and a t there so that these don't cancel out in the process. So I've now got four undetermined coefficients that I find by plugging into the differential equation. Y p prime is now a plus, all right, so first times we drew the second, c t cosine of t plus c sine of t. Second times we drew the first. Now this one's going to be first times we drew the second, so minus d t sine of t plus d cosine of t. Y P double prime then becomes A goes to zero. You have first times the degree of the second, so C T negative sine T plus the second times the degree of the first gives me a C cosine T. Next one, derivative of C sine of T is plus C cosine T. Next one's the product rule, so I do a minus D t cosine of t minus d sine t and the last one's going to be a minus d sine of t also. I'm going to simplify that just a hair. I've got t sine t, t cosine t. I'm going to just write those first. Done and done. And then I'm going to do, I've got 2 C cosine of T and minus 2 D sine of T. Excellent. So they're all minus. Now, plug all of these in to the original. Namely, the second derivative and the, and the zero derivative. Okay, so take... 
yp double prime plus y. That is negative ct sine of t minus dt cosine of t plus 2c cosine t minus 2d sine t plus y sub p, which is just um, at plus b plus ct sine of t plus dt cosine of t. Let me see where those break up. That's y p double prime plus y p. <clears throat> All right, so a little algebra. This cancels with this. The ct sine of t cancels with the minus ct sine of t. The minus dt cosine of t cancels with the plus dt cosine of t. Now I have an at plus b plus 2c cosine of t minus 2d sine t. And that has to equal the right-hand side, so I set that equal to this up here at the top, 4t plus 10 sine t. So A has to be 4, B has to be 0, 2C has to be 0, so C is 0, and minus 2D has to be 10, so D is negative 5. So all that together says Y sub P is, plug in 4 for A, 0 for B, 0 for C, and negative 5 for D, I get 4T minus 5T cosine of T. So here's now where we do the final step, which is the initial value problem solve. We're actually solving the initial condition. So y, my solution, is y sub h plus y sub p, which means y is c1 from up here, sine t plus c2 cosine t. Plus your y sub p, so plus 4t minus 5t cosine of t. All right, my initial conditions. I'm going to jot them down from above. I think they were y at pi equals 0 and y prime at pi equals 2. I don't know why I chose pi as the starting place. It's going to make it a little messier than it needs to be, but I have never been accused of doing things the quickest, simplest, easiest way. So the first one, I plug in y of pi. So y of pi just into y gives me um, sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1, so I have a negative C2, so plus 4 pi minus 5 pi cosine of pi, and again cosine of pi is negative 1, so that's plus 5. So C2 is, oh, and i got to set that equal to something. That's equal to 0 by the initial condition. So C2 is 4 pi plus 5. Isn't it 5 pi? 
Five pi, yes. Nine pi, then. Ten. Thank you. That's a good reason. I <coughs> would have missed that up on the video. Thank you, thank you. Four pi plus five pi is nine pi. Pi here. All right. And now we need to do y prime. Got to plug in for that. So y prime is uh, c1 cosine of t minus c2 sine of t plus 4 minus um, plus 5t sine of t minus 5 cosine of t. c1 cosine t derivative of cosine of negative sine, so minus c2, derivative of 4t is 4, first is minus 5t times the derivative of cosine, that's minus sine t, so plus 5t sine t, and then second times derivative of the first, cosine times derivative of negative 5t is negative 5, so negative 5 cosine t. So y prime at pi gives me a negative c1, Cosine of pi is negative 1. C2 sine t goes to 0, so plus, and then 4. This at pi is 0, so minus plus 5. So cosine of pi is negative 1. So I get C1, and that has to equal 2 in this case. So C... Negative C1 plus 9 equals 2, so C1 is 7. So all told together, what I have now is Y equals 7 sine of T plus 9 pi cosine of T plus 4T minus 5t cosine of t. No c's at all. There we go. That's the final full answer of what the behavior of this looks like over the long term. At any given time, t, I should say.